He is best known for playing B.J. Honeycutt on MASH. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mike Farrell. When I got the job, and there's a whole process about that, 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 that led up to my getting the job, but when I got the job, I, I, I was thrilled because it was a show I admired even before I became part of it. But I was also wary of the fact that it was a well-known, very successful show with a, with a very um, tight ensemble. And I knew they all cared about each other. And I thought, there, there may be the possibility that I'm going to be hated as the guy who stepped into the shoes of their beloved Wayne Rogers. And that worried me some. That was quickly taken care of by the cast that made me feel very welcome and explained that uh, they didn't... Um, not that they didn't care about Wayne, but that they understood and uh, supported his decision and were thrilled to have me there. Then I became afraid that the audience was going to hate me. <laughs> and having been around television for a number of years prior to that, I thought, if this show sinks in its fourth year, I'm going to wear it around my neck for the rest of my life. <laughs> and thank heaven it did not. So uh, the, the rest is history. I've always felt that we ended the show, and we chose to end the show. We said it's over, and the network had a conniption fit, and the studio hated us. But we said it was it was it was time. And um, there's a story about that. Actually, I'll tell you because I'm enjoying this. Um, <laughs> um, but we, we one of the reasons we quit was we didn't want to ride the horse downhill. We didn't want to let it become a carbon copy of itself. We felt we had come, said what we came to say. The show had enjoyed enormous, enormous success, and frankly still does. I have people stop me every day talking about how much they see, and people who were, some of them not born yet when the show was on the air, talking about how much they love it, and et cetera, so it's great. Um, the, when we told the studio uh, that the show was going to be over, um, one of the things we said was we wanted an episode that ended the war. And they said, oh, no, no, you can't do that. And we said, of course you can do that. And they said, no, you can't have that. And so we negotiated back and forth, and, and f we finally said, why? So this guy came down to the set, and he sat with us, and he said, do you remember The Fugitive, David Jansen's show about the doctor who was wrongly accused of being a murderer, and his whole existence was chasing down this one-armed man who he was the only one who knew was the real murderer? We said, yeah, sure, we remember that show. He said, well, in The Fugitive, when David Jansen decided to end the show, he resolved it by finding the one-armed man and making sure everybody understood that Dr. What's-His-Name was, uh, was uh, not guilty. And it killed the show in syndication. So they couldn't make money on it and selling it after the fact. And he said, so you see, we can't do a show about the end of the war. And we looked at him for quite a while. And I finally said, you know, it might surprise you to know that a lot of people realize the Korean War ended. <laughs> I'm often asked, was it, did you folks doing the show have as much fun as we have in watching it? And my answer is always, we had much more fun doing it than you have in watching it. We joked, we played tricks on each other, we played games, we did all kinds of things. But one of the great things about being part of the show was that we, because MASH was what it was, it was a show about human values, an anti-war show, really well done, even if I do say so myself, by highly qualified, highly trained actors, let me absent myself from that, highly trained actors and writers who really gave their all to make this the best possible show it could be. So I detest most of what's on television, much of what's on television today. Thankfully, there are still some people doing good work in television. Uh, because I consider it to be the most powerful technology ever developed, and I think that we need to be raising people's hopes and expectations with it rather than dumbing them down. Thank you.